Good evening and welcome to the Pride Month 2022 by Accelerate. Today we have the honor of our esteemed guests who are present in our office at Accelerate and uh, they are being joining for this beautiful swanky sex and pleasure topic discussion. It's going to be a round table uh, council, it's going to be fun, it's going to be uncensored topics that are only remaining in our brains and not in our mouths. And today we take that privilege to speak out our pleasure with sex. So before we go further, I have um, our esteemed guests who have joined us um, and they have been extensively working in their respective fields and trying to promote safe sexual behavior among the LGBTQIA population in India. So today we have Rishi S. Baba as the program manager, Accelerate. Then we also have Sutita Das, who is an SRHR implementation and training at the YP Foundation, New Delhi. Then we also have Basmaya Raulo, program manager, Impulse, uh, India, AHF, India. Then we have Rohit Bansal, who is a young model from the community and along with him, we also have his friend Shiva. Uh, but yes, we also have Dr. Subhash Ghosh, who is the project lead Accelerate. And along with him, we have Aditya Singh, uh, Deputy Chief of Party Accelerate. So are we all ready? Yes. 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 Okay, okay. But before we actually hit and deep dive down, let us first have an opening remark by Dr. Subhash Ghosh. Thank you, Simran. Uh, we are celebrating Pride Month uh, in the project through our social media campaigns. You know, drawing attention, uh, bringing conversations which are, you know, beyond sexual health, beyond, you know, issues around LGBTIQ community. Uh, so I am proudly, I can say that we work with uh, the community. They are, they are our providers also. Uh, they are doctors, they are community workers who really feel very proud uh, serving their own community uh, in a way that is acceptable. But today we are discussing something, uh, you know, like uh, Simran started with uncensored. Yes, sometimes we don't want to discuss about uh, pleasure and sex. We always try to, you know, stigmatize, uh, saying that okay, this picture or the sensuality or the way we, you know, um, express our pleasure uh, is sometimes, you know, we want to uh, keep under the carpet in our sexual health and HIV interventions. So I think uh, during pre uh, this Pride Month, with all our esteemed guests uh, here, we would like to break that bias, talk about it, and you know, give this message to the community, to the public, to our audience, uh, that you know, uh, we can handle this. Aak Marke. Oh my God! Aak Marke is what I'm going to pick up from Dr. Subhash Ghosh. Um, opening remark and with that let's be uncensored so are we really ready for the uncensored topic discussion yes. Yeah? yes oh okay fine so let's play a quick game right now and uh, I see each one of you have this placard okay yes. and um, I'm gonna pose some few questions and I want real answers from you. It's either going to be like I have or I never have. Okay? Uh, the answers could be that. And uh, be honest to yourself. Let our audience actually know that, you know, we are uncensored. Upmarket. Okay. Okay. With that, um, the first ever question is never have never have I ever had sex in public. Have I have I have I have I've never. We have. <laughs> <laughs> I I think our audience 
offline, I'm really saying you should. Okay. It's pleasure. Yeah, no, now you both of us. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you have. Okay, now let me put the second question. Never have I ever sent a dirty text to a wrong person. By mistake. I have. <laughs> I did. Mm -hmm. All the time. I did. All the time. All the time. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Now, with that, I further proceed to another question. Never have I ever had threesome after drinking or being high. <laughs> threesome orgy, everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, my last question. Never have I ever indulged in BDSM. I'm exploring, so I will say I have. No. Okay. Recently, I I you never. Mm -hmm. You never. Mm -hmm. You need a spank, <laughs> darling. We need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good responses. With that round, actually we break the ice and we are now going to dive a little deep in conversation with our extreme esteem planner. So with that, Vismaya, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So this is a question which we want an honest answer from you. It's going to talk about your experience, but remember, None of us are going to be judgmental. Yeah. Okay? So in the context of HIV, what is the idea behind safe anal sex? According to your experience, are people taking extra measures while having pleasurable anal sex? The safest method you want to know? Okay. <laughs> um yeah. So see, anal sex ke liye, uh, I feel like you know. People like you know take it very seriously. Like you know they need a partner or they need a sex toy that you ask right now. Correct, right? Correct. So if you are going for a partner, like a you know, human for that matter, so definitely like you know condom is must. Mm -hmm. And वो condom के variety के ऊपर भी लोगों का pressure depend करता है. What kind of condom you need? Like you need a dotted one. You need like you know you know like the view based one, water based one, or there are varieties like you know thin one. But then it has got like you know masala chart, sab ke naam pe condom se. I know the banana condom. Yeah. All the food, all the masala, you name it, and maybe you find one. So correct. So condom is definitely yes. That is definitely helping like you know taking the pressure. People are like you know sometimes feel ki like you know nahi condom se mazal nahi aata hai. But darling, please be careful. Use the fucking condom that is needed. So that is there, and for the sex toys, definitely yes. Um, उसके लिए like you know बहुत सारे चीजें हैं. You have dildos, you have vibrators, whatever you want, you are comfortable with. So I think uh, sex toys definitely play a vital role. Who are like you know maybe not very uh, sexually active with human beings. But they want the pleasure at the same time, self pleasure. Mm -hmm. So when I say self pleasure, it's always not masturbation, right? It could be like you know anal pleasure as well. Correct. So sex toys help like you know literally really well. So well, yeah, yeah, I think these things like help a lot. Absolutely. Very fun and safe, you know. The pleasure. Is I love this. Always. Yes, having fun with extra precaution. Kisi ka kya jayega, hai na? Yes. Wow. Okay, with that I come to Sudipta. Is there a notion of caste-based fetish of gay men? Well, definitely. I mean, uh, the moment to talk about the identities and caste, I think that's a reality within the queer spaces also. Mm -hmm. But a lot of time there is no recognition of that. So the kind of you know, like when we talk about pleasure, also there is so much of concentration around shaping the language that we don't talk about the bodies. 
but bodies have historically been the sites of pleasure, exploration, a lot of other things along with operation also. So the location or the positionality of Dalit bodies that we have within the queer spaces also, we have seen that a lot of Dalit queer people have uh, said that there is a desirability politics, that a lot of time Dalit people will not be looked at uh, who is desirable and that sort of influences uh, their experiences of pleasure also. Sort of narrative that Dalit people are not desirable within the queer spaces because of the way they look or their body colour and all of that. Uh, and then there is fetishization also and that happens to Dalit men, women and trans people. So typically for Dalit men, the imagination that they are from the working class and that sort of creates a notion that they are going to be very mask appearing, their body is going to be very ripped and all and that's sort of an image that a lot of people have. Uh, for Dalit women also, the imagination that they are going to be unfeminine. You know, the LGBT community at times itself is divided between the elite um, you know, the yes. elite crowd and the yes. Gautam car, uh, crowd, yeah. what we call. But I think, thank you so much for actually having this discussion and trying to, you know, normalize. Um, at one hand, we do say that, you know, it is affirming, but at the same time, somewhere down, down the deep that, you know, it is pinpointing. Yeah. You know, we don't want that. Yeah. Thank you for having this discussion. I now come to you, Rishi. I hope it's a more fun question. <laughs> okay, so Rishi, what are some of the safety measures that one could take while engaging in chemsex, what we call as chemical sex, to avoid contracting HIV and STIs? So I'll start with what chemsex is. Okay. For people who like uh, use dating apps, you're very familiar. It's called high fun or uh, there are like specific terms to indicate chemsex. Basically you get high and then you have sex to increase that pleasure perception. And um, what are some of the safety measures? That's like a very tricky question. So because on dating apps, we usually don't know the people. So uh, as a general rule of thumb, I would say be on prep. Uh, but you know, prep alone doesn't guarantee any kind of protection. Uh, you need to be, you need to use condoms as well when you have uh, anal sex. Having chem sex because you don't know what is going to happen after that. So it's uh, better if you have it with people you either know uh, or with a person you know, or if it's like a random person, just try to have this conversation. You know, like what we usually have this conversation on dating apps. What are the limits? What is the safe word? and uh, do like general things like share your location or something with a friend or someone you trust before you go to an unknown place. Okay, let me come down to Rohit. Rohit. Does appearance influence consent when you are at the peak of your sexual activity? Um, yes, sometimes it happens. Okay. And why do you think that consent is very important? What happens in it? If you are doing sex without any kind of sex, you should have sex with someone else. If you are doing sex with someone else, you should have sex with someone else. You know, I had a very bad experience in my childhood. I had some bad experience when I am meeting someone. So, if someone asks me, like, do you like BDSM? I don't know, like, you know, what is BDSM? I came, I came to that person how you know he uh, electric shock gave me also like that. So I didn't know like you know radiation kya hota. So I should know what what he's doing with me. I should have that sense that yes, I'm agree with that. Then you know you should start with me. That you know I feel like consent is me hona chahiye is ka. Okay, thank you Rohit. It really you know encourage hota hai. Uh, you know, logo ke saamne aake bolna, apna testimonial share karna hai. Thank you so much. But kya hum tabhi consent lete hai? Ye question bohat zaruri hai address karne ke liye. And I think one must and should have the consent. Also, can I say one more consent? Yes, please. <coughs> because consent is also, it's not a one-off thing. Okay. It's not like, oh, you agreed to go out on a date with me, so now I've got consent to do anything. Like there also like even like I think your question was also like very specific because like what if you're in the peak of like you know a sexual moment and that point of time you end up crossing the line between having consent and not having consent so it's you know that's why that like 
again coming back to what Rishi was saying in a way was that it's kind of important to know who you are with. Like you don't have to know them forever. You've got to have certain conversations as to what is possible and what is what you'd like to do or what you'd like to be done to you or all of that stuff without it getting into a zone where you know you're ready in the heat of moments and for somebody it's like super pleasurable and for the other one it ends up becoming like um, something which is abusive or coercive. Yes. So yeah. I'd say that they have, you, like we all need to like get out that message somewhere that there are layers to consent and there are levels of consent and it's important to keep the engagement related to consent otherwise that can be crossed at any point of time. Yeah. of the time when our community is doing sex work usme to mana gaya hai ki you know you are supposed to do what because i paid yeah. you know because i paid to you you have to do whatever i say and tabhi aksar you know the the uh, the consent ka jo niyam the meaning hota hai wo break ho jata hai because i am paid wo thappa lag jata hai ki i'm about to do what you are going to tell me hmm. and wahan pe you know 90s mein agar aap dekhoge सबसे ज्यादा एच आई वी का मूवमेंट जब बड़ा था भारत में इट वॉज बिकॉज कॉन्टेक्ट निगोसिएशन वॉज वेरी लेस बीस रुपया पचास रुपया दे के यू नो जो लोग सेक्स वर्क इंडस्ट्री में थे उनके साथ एच आई वी का खतरा और बढ़ते गए सो दैट्स दैट्स द लवली टॉपिक दैट यू नो वन शुड अंडरस्टैंड अ डीपर मीनिंग ऑफ कंसेंट एंड वन शुड अबाइड बाई दैट राइट So, Bismaya, Aap Marke, what according to you is the definition of pleasure, and what are the best positions for it? Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Um, feel free to demonstrate. I know the the room is yours, honey. I'm not the man. <laughs> so you have to use the air man. <laughs> yeah. Imagination. <laughs> so, uh, see, for me, pleasure is like something like you know when I'm involved uh, passionately, romantically. Romantically is like not hard for the connection, huh? Please. <laughs> But yeah, somehow I want to feel the human touch, the body. Like you know, it doesn't have to rush. Basically, like you know, how we like you know let's fuck each other and let's leave now. I want some cuddles. I want some like you know, give it a little bit of like you know, give. वार्म अप करो थोड़ा सा थोड़ा सा केयरस करो एंड थोड़ा सा लाइक यू नो कि मतलब वो स्नगल्स करो देन लाइक यू प्लेस ओपन इट सो आई आई लाइक यू नो लाइक दैट एक्चुअली सो दैट इज लाइक यू नो जब वो प्रोसेस पे जाता है आई नो आई एम सेइंग प्रोसेस सेक्स में कभी कोई प्रोसेस नहीं है बट या जब वो लाइक यू नो वो मूड के हिसाब से धीरे-धीरे स्लोली स्टेडीली जाता है देन आई थिंक लाइक यू नो कि मतलब आई गेट द प्रेशर टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट एंड इट डजंट हैव टू बी लाइक यू नो एन ऑल द टाइम Okay, कहते हैं कि नहीं देर इज देर इज नो फॉर देन बॉडी सा एन्जॉय दी वर्क आर लाइक यू कुछ लोग पूछते हैं बट नो इट्स नॉट नीड समाइम्स लाइक यू नो कि वो बॉडी का टच होता है ऑरल्स में लाइक यू नो लिटरली लाइक यू कैन टच लिटरल ऑफ दैर सब कि वो प्रेशर ऑरल्स में भी होता है सो वी डोंट हैव टू लाइक यू नो बॉक्स इट कि मतलब आपको लाइक यू नो एनुअल से ही प्रेशर मिलेगा ऑरल से ही प्रेशर मिलेगा या फिर लाइक यू नो आप साइड हो तो आपको लाइक यू प्रेशर बिल्कुल ही मिलेगा ऑल दैट नहीं इट्स जस्ट ए लाइक यू नो परसेप्शन Pleasure is something what you like with consent. जो हम थोड़ी देर पहले discussion कर रहे थे. Absolutely. That is there. And about my favorite positions, since like you know I mentioned like you know I'm not much into annals. Um, but still, whenever I do annals, then yes, I do enjoy missionary. I do enjoy doggy. And uh, depends. I want to experiment. Since I'm exploring BDS and थोड़ा थोड़ा मुझे king भी अच्छा लग रहा है. So I want to explore more. What about, the, what about the helicopter? <laughs> that is not a special. I won't explore that. I have to explore that. <laughs> so I think, like you know, there are like 64 positions in the Kam Sutra. I have to explore all of them. Then I will come up with a better answer. Okay, what what side women literally both enjoy? Okay, mm-hmm. absolutely, absolutely. And the Kam Sutra that we have invented, that Indians have invented, what's yours? Yes. 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 तो सारे हम ट्राई कर हम अभी लाइक तीन चार पोजीशंस के साथ ही लिमिटेड है लाइक ना जनरली जो बात करते हैं बट यार वी नीड टू एक्सप्लोर ऑल पोजीशंस देन ओनली वी कैन थोड़ा सा कमर दर्द हो सकता है या अच्छा आई एग्री आई आई एग्री थोड़ा सा पेन तो होता है प्रेशर के लिए भी आई नो नो पेन नो गेन राइट ओके सो दिस टाइम कमिंग 
to you. Do you think sexual behavior among the LGBT person may negatively affect their sexual and reproductive health and why so? Uh, sexual behavior as in? So sexual behavior um, as in um, when we talk about having for example, uh, you know, you you are an operated uh, trans men or trans women. Okay, does it have any negative impact on their SRHR uh, needs or SRHR wants? And if yes, yeah. why so? If no, why so? I'm loving that I'm getting all these serious questions, but... <laughs> um, yeah, honey, you know, all these Sarajha people are supposed to be serious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the easy answer to that, no, there is no impact, but definitely, if you look at the healthcare system of the structures, definitely that makes it very difficult for queer trans people to access any sort of healthcare services. In fact, most of the people are from the community. We know that the amount of anxiety we experience when we have to go to a hospital or we have to reach out to a doctor and have to talk about our identities or our bodies, right? Uh, and that's very sort of prominent within the community. So in terms of sexual behavior, so there are two sort of sections of that, right? Uh, because queer people don't have a script to follow, we are very creative people and we sort of create our own path of sort of exploring sexuality, sex, pleasure, all of it. And then there is this notion which predominantly comes from CISET sort of conditioning where we try to mimic them uh, but like uh, they were also talking about the anal sex right a lot of time uh, male body people might not experience a lot of physical or like uh, prostate stimulation through physical intimacy but uh, I personally feel that also comes from the mimicking of cis sex where penetration is seen as something which is the center of pleasure and the people who move beyond of penetration, they will be looked at with a lot of suspicion that, oh, are you enjoying sex or not? So the sexual behavior among queer trans people has been very diverse. It's very subjective also the way people experience that. Uh, but irrespective of the kind of anatomy they have, the kind of sexual behavior they engage in, uh, that doesn't have any impact on SRHR definitely and the recent studies have also shown you know the historical sort of notion that uh, gay men are the men who have a lot of HIV among them and the recent studies have proved that it's not true so we are also shifting from that conditioning uh, so what happens because definitely there is this sexual liberation that's the sort of larger narrative uh, within the queer trans space uh, safety becomes a key element that we need to discuss uh, but unfortunately when it comes to SRHR, the kind of spaces who are giving HR uh, services, they are not very queer trans affirmative. So for example, if you look at the RKSK centers, uh, the Rashtriya Kishore Hitashi clinics that we have in a lot of districts across the country, uh, they are supposed to give a lot of information on SRHR to adolescents. But a lot of time the kind of information they will be giving that's going to be very much in binary and sort of to sort of imagining the beneficiaries are only going to be cisset adolescents. So that creates a disparity because there is no information <coughs> or any implementation. But I would definitely say that because of the sexual behavior of queer trans people, it's not that SRHR uh, sort of, that will be impacted. It's not true. It's just the information gap and the implementation gap. Okay. But also the understanding of pleasure, I think most of the time the imaginations that we have in context of like sexual or sex or intimacy but I think for like marginalized spe uh, people especially, pleasure also comes from identity affirming spaces like it's a psychosocial a lot of times, uh, even in intimate situations if my identity being affirmed then I'm also sort of consuming a lot of pleasure from those kind of experiences. So the kind of services that Mitra clinics are also providing like hair removal or gender affirmative sort of care. So those a lot of time is also very pleasure affirmative experiences for queer trans people. Oh, so just absolutely. wanted to put that. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for so thank you so much for that. So Rishi, the question for you is what is can sex? and are people comfortable practicing cancer? If you could let us also know where does the pleasure element 
stand in chemsex. So uh, I already defined chemsex. It's, yes. Uh, just to like answer your question, it is getting high, and then you have sex. That is uh, what chemsex is all about. You get high during the pro during when while you have sex, and then that is basically chemsex or high fun or what you see on dating apps, 420 friendly, all the snowflakes and all that. So, uh, pleasure and um, chemsex. First of all, I would like to start by saying that you can't judge a person's uh, experience of sex. You know, it is like if I get high and if I have sex, it is me experiencing sex in a specific way. So, when it comes to pleasure, there are a bunch of things that happens uh, during this high fun as opposed to your a normal, I mean, not normal, sorry for using that word, but sober sex. Uh, what happens is your uh, response to certain, you know, touch that changes. You might have a heightened sensitivity to that, heightened response to that. Your inhibitions come down. So, in my opinion, I think it's a combination of such factors that contribute to the pleasure part uh, in chem sex. Now, also, it is your your definition of intimacy. Like for example, when I touch someone uh, in this like a, in a normal scenario, it might have a specific response to it. But when you are high, it gives you the balls to like, you know, think of certain things that you are scared of uh, even thinking it, thinking about it. Like for example, um, just sharing an experience just for fun, okay? Um, but this did happen. Uh, <laughs> when I, like I met a person, he was high, and then I like touched this way and then he was like he kept on calling out uh, a name that is like his that's how he calls his dad in his native tongue and he's experiencing that intimacy with his own father during this high fun and then you can't judge a person because he's doing it i don't know why he's calling out the name you can just <laughs> respect people's choice or they want to experience intimacy in a specific way so i think pleasure is subjective but in chemsex or in high fun, a lot of things like this happen. Absolutely, I completely agree with you. Uh, thank you, very, very, very uh, pleasurable discussion. Uh, I would not call it an intense, but I'm pleasurable right. discussion. Uh, so, some last words, maybe in one word, if you could describe the Pride Month for 2022. So, we start with Rishi. Sorry, I'm looking at you, Rishi. One word. Fun. Okay. Wow. Magical. Wow. Be you. Be you. Proud. Proud. Be fearless. Be fearless. I would say pleasure. Subjective. Uh -huh. <laughs> get deeper. Mm. I'm sure everyone wants to get deeper. <laughs> With that deepness. I would request now Aditya Singh Ji, the Deputy uh, Chief of Party Accelerate to give the closing remark and sum up this beautiful discussion. Sorry, pleasure of a discussion. First of all, I wish I had a longer designation. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so that you could give me a little more time to go on. Oh. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I think it's been a wonderful discussion. Um, it's very it's rare actually because you know we are all into some kind of work or the other that we sit back and we you know talk about things in the way that we experience them and I guess all of us want uh, we uh, you know we are all advocates for pleasure we are all advocates for uh, safety whether it's you know personal or health wise or whatever it is but I think what I said about Pride Month also is that a lot of these experiences are extremely subjective and subjectivity actually comes from understanding yourself so I think what. I guess what we are getting from today is that it's very important to know okay, who you are, you know, what are your boundaries, how can you express that to someone that you are with, whether it is you know, a romantic partner or a, or a transactional partner or whatever it is, but it's important to know what those boundaries are, what's fun, what's not fun. I think uh, sometimes there's like this grey areas between you know, pleasure and consent and coercion and fetish and kink and whatever, but I think that you know, getting an understanding of what you're looking for, what you actually want to do, um, and what you want to experience, that will actually help you to tread that better. So, I mean, for us, it's just that pride is about being proud. It's about, it's not about being scared. It's definitely not about, you know, living in fear. It's definitely about embracing the things that make you happy, right? 
So, the, which is why we wanted to start a discussion with, you know, talking about pleasure and talking about different types of experiences. So again, I thank, you know, each one of you for being here, uh, for, you know, bringing all these things to the table. I know we talked about like some very serious uh, things as well, um, and some not so serious things, but I think at the end of the day, uh, what we're looking for is, you know, to keep the pride alive, uh, and also get, you know, messages out there for people who sometimes don't have the, you know, resources to know the difference between what can be harmful and what can't be harmful, and that is our intention. So to me, this is like the first part of maybe many more engagements, and I think we, we as a group, uh, we can uh, we can have our own show on TV. <laughs> yes, I completely yeah. agree. Yeah, you would watch. You would pay to watch this, right? Yeah. Yeah, you would pay for this, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you read your favorite myth. <laughs> Maybe you can pay to us. So, so, so again, thank you everyone. Thank you. And thank you. 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 I think we had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful discussion. I really want to thank each one of us uh, for having this conversation and also those people who are behind the camera. So thank you, the entire team of documentation and communication from Ancillary.